So I think it's one of the simplest, easiest tests of the semester. I was a little surprised at how low the grades were in the average. Now there are some people that's very well and some people that are not. Sometimes what happens is when a topic gets too easy, so they knock off and say, oh, I don't need to study this because it's so easy. we've seen before, but we've seen it only with respect to numbers. Looks like this. In general, I'm going to call the numbers by letter names right now. Then we'll look at a specific example. A multiplied by the sum of B plus C is A times B plus A times C. In other words, if I had something like this, 3 multiplied by the sum of 11 plus 5. I have two ways I can do that. One way is to use PEMDAS. And PEMDAS says do the parentheses first. Okay. If I do the parentheses first, I get 16. Still have to multiply by that 3. That's all that's left, so of course that's what we do. That's going to give us 48. All right. But this says, oh, you could take that 3 and multiply it by the 11. That would be A times B. And then add that to 3 multiplied by the 5. And that would be the AC up here. Okay, let's make sure it works. 3 times 11 would be 33. This would be 15. And sure enough, when you add those, you get 48. So what the distributive property says is that when you're doing a combination of multiplication and addition, which is what it is, 
Here you've got addition, there's multiplication. Here you've got multiplication, there's addition. You can basically do it either or, and you'll still get the same answer, which is kind of amazing. And that's not something you might expect. But you can add first and then multiply, or you can multiply first and then add. You'll still get the same answer. So one is interchangeable with the other. And it goes both ways, by the way. You can um, either start with a product and go over here to a sum of two things, or you can start with the sum, come back and go to the product. And both of those ways are extremely important in algebra. That's one of the big properties that we use for the, uh, the entire Algebra 1 course. So what we want to do is play with it and put some num letters in as well as the numbers and see what we can get from this. So just some examples to show you how it goes. Very simple one. Suppose we have 3 times x plus 4. Okay. Remember the x stands for a number we don't yet know, but we hope to know it very soon. Okay, it's going to be part of the problem to figure out what x is. All right, but still a number. So this says I can take that 3, which is the multiplying number, bring it in, multiply it by the x, and also multiply it by the 4. The reason it's called the distributive property is because you're distributing the multiplication among the terms of the addition so that everything in the addition gets multiplied by that outside number. So that would give me a 3 times x, and a 3 times 4 is 12. Now, both of these things are perfectly equivalent to each other. Sometimes you'll want the sum, sometimes you'll want the product. It just depends on what's going on in the particular level of algebra that you're in. But this is, either one will is perfectly OK, they're interchangeable. Notice we don't have to indicate multiplication here. You can do it. You can put a dot there if you want to. But when you're putting things next to each other and they're not the same kind of thing, like a number and a letter, just put them next to each other. It's, um, it's perfectly OK. That's acceptable. That's known as, here it comes, the word for today. This is what you put in your, your crossword, right? Juxtaposition. Not too many people know what that word means. It means put things next to each other. That's what it means. <laughs> so, all right. Now let's go and take that problem that Melissa mentioned. This is number 63. And see what happens. <coughs> this is, uh, looks like this. Number 63 and 11.1 says, Suppose I have a minus 5, and I want to multiply it by a minus 2 plus x. That's still a distributive law. It's just that the number that's being multiplied <coughs> is negative. And one of the, ne the numbers inside is also negative. Uh, but we still do the same thing. We still think of taking this number, multiply it by that one, multiply it by that one, distribute the multiplication among these terms. Now, because of the minus signs, we're going to have to be particularly careful. We'll have to use the rules of signs. And also, I suggest using parentheses to make things extremely clear. So, first multiplication will look like this. A minus 5 times a minus 2. Just put them in parentheses like that. To that, I'm going to add a minus 5 multiplied by an x. Okay. Minus 5 times minus 2, according to the rules of signs, is a plus 10. Now, here I've got plus. Now, minus, time, minus 5 times an x is just that. It's a minus 5x. There's nothing you can do with it. Since you don't know what x is, you have to write them as though they're multiplied. But there's nothing else to do. Then we've got this problem of the double signs. That's considered bad form. And the way you get rid of that is just change the operation. It's right now an addition operation a <coughs> negative term. That's a negative term over there. If you change it back to a subtraction operation, then you have to change that to its opposite. And the opposite of it would be just that without the minus sign. So that would be the final result that the book would show you. This little thing about getting out of the double signs is, is important from the standpoint of you, know, you want things to look a certain way so other people will understand them and things like that. If you left it like that, people would say, oh, they're not finishing the problem correctly. 
bad form. So like tennis, you know, you may you may hit it, and slam it across the net, but if you do it, then it's awkward. You got bad form. Yeah. They'll laugh at you. They'll do reruns on the internet and all that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's look at some more of these. The distributive law works for any number of terms. Here's two times three y minus. 5z plus 1. All right, we've got three terms inside here now. Remember, terms technically are things that are added. But even though there's a subtraction there, that's not a big deal because you can always change subtraction to addition of the opposite. So they're really all added. All right, let's bring the two inside. Okay, so it's a 2 times 3y. Now I'm just going to leave that as subtraction and take the 2 and multiply it by the 5z plus 2 times that one, which is just 2 times 1. Now here, you've got three things multiplied, and with multiplication, you can multiply any 2 you want. Well, you can multiply anything by y if you don't know what y is. So 2 times 3 would be 6. Again, here, 2 times 5 would be 10 and here just two. And that would be the result. So we're changing from a product into a sum. And that's one way of looking at the distributive law. Another one? <coughs> two thirds times six p plus one fourth. Okay, the fact that we've got fractions doesn't change a thing. We still go ahead and do our distribution. That's 2 thirds times 6p. I'll write it like that. And 2 thirds times 1 fourth. And you can think of any of these things as being over 1. So you can use the fraction idea, cancel. 2 times 2 times p, that would be 4p. Notice there's a 2 up there now because of the canceling. And that still multiplies that 2 over there. So you've got 2 times 2 or 4, and you still you also have a p there. On the bottom it's just 1, so there's no point in writing in 1. Now here, you do cancel. 2 into 2 is 1, 2 into 4 is 2. So multiplying tops and multiplying bottoms, you get 1 on the top, and 2 times 3 is 6. So that's the distributed form of what we saw. Now, here's where things get a little sticky. Uh, we're going to start talking about bringing in negative numbers. We did bring in a negative number there. But let's expand it a little bit. Suppose we do something like this. So minus 8 times 2 minus 5y. All right, there's a lot going on there. And so what your book does is this. I'll show you the way they recommend doing this. It's not the only way to do it. These, these things, if you've had this course before and you were trained to do it another way, as long as it's fine and you know how to do it and get right answers, that's fine with me. But uh, the book does it this way. They say, all right, this is a negative sign indicating minus 8, negative 8. But that's a subtraction sign because it's something on either side. So let's change subtraction to addition, but we've got to take the opposite of what? The opposite of 5y is a minus 5y. So your book changes it to that. Mainly because they, they want you to keep the sign straight, and the easiest way to keep things straight with signs is to have addition. So let's try it. Let's bring this minus 8 inside. That's a minus 8 times a 2 plus, because we're adding now, a minus 8 times a minus 5y. Okay. Well, a negative times a positive is negative 16. Now we've got addition going on. So you have a minus 8 times a minus 5. Those are the only two you can multiply. Minus times a minus is a plus 40. Okay. That's it. There's your answer right there. Now, these are not like terms in the sense that we can combine these things. We'll find out about that today. But constants and variable terms, totally different from each other. 
therefore, that's where we leave it. Now, here's one that is a bit tricky. First of all, you have to say, what on earth does it mean? Okay. That minus sign sitting out there means take the opposite of it. Okay, now the opposite of anything is minus one times it. Huh? We start out number line zero minus three plus three. <coughs> if someone says, well, I'm going to start with minus three and I want its opposite, they're talking about the mirror reflection over here, same distance away from zero that minus three is. Obviously, they're talking about plus three. So, how do you get the opposite? You take a minus three and multiply it by a minus one. According to the rules, that gives you a plus 3. Here's the opposite. And the same, the same thing would happen if you started with a plus 3, its opposite would be minus 3. Okay, so what they're really saying here is I want to multiply this by a minus 1. Because I want the opposite. Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> now we bring that inside the way we do with distributive laws. We're distributing that multiplication minus 1 times a minus 4a plus a minus 1 times a b plus a minus 1 times a 3c. All right, now let's go back and straighten this out. This is a plus 4a. This is a minus b. Minus 1 times b would be its opposite. Its opposite is minus b. And minus 3c. And now we've got the sign problem, double sign here, double sign there. And to get out of that, we switch back to the opposite operation. So it becomes 4a minus subtracting. And the opposite of that is a positive b. And likewise, this becomes subtract. The opposite of that is a positive 3c. Now, the quick way to get beyond all of this in this particular case is just to observe the signs. Minus, plus, plus. Take the opposite of something, you get a plus, minus, minus. In other words, if you ignore all the stuff that we have trained ourselves to understand and just flip all the signs, get the right answer. That's a quick email. All right. That's distributable. One of the most important tools. Remember, we're in the area now where we're simplifying algebra expressions, and this is called simplification here. All uh, right, so let's go on to section two. We're still doing simplification, but we're combining like terms. Okay. In algebra, you very often have an expression that has x's and y's or whatever, unknowns. But it'll have more than one power of a particular unknown. Let's say it has x, then it has an x squared. You know, in other words, the exponent notation is very common enough. We've got to learn what to do with that. Well, like terms are defined in this way. Terms, remember terms are things that are added, that have the same power, that, let's put it this way, the same variable. And that means the letter to the same power. So if you have something like a 5x squared and another term called 5x, those aren't like terms. 
because even though you have the same y and the same x, the x is squared over there on the left one, and it's not on the right one. And therefore, powers are different, no like terms. On the other hand, if you have something like 5x squared and a minus 15x squared, yeah, those are like terms. It has nothing to do with the coefficient. This number that's multiplying the unknown, nothing to do with that. It just has to do with the power and the variable. <laughs> x squared, x squared, like terms. These are called unlike terms. <laughs> if you have a 3 and a um, minus 2y, there's no y over here, therefore unlike. In other words, constants are not like terms with any term that has a variable. They're completely different ideas. What's called a polynomial is a sum of terms that are constants. <laughs> or variables <laughs> times numbers. So a typical polynomial might be something like this. 2x squared plus 3x minus 4. Now first of all, is it a sum? Yes, because remember subtraction can always be written as addition of the opposite. So it is a sum. This is a variable term. This is a variable term. Because it's got an unknown in it. That's also called a variable. This is a constant term. It just doesn't change. It's always 4. Actually, the constant here is not 4. It's minus 4. Because to tell what the constant is, you'd have to switch over to addition of the opposite. So it's really a minus. That's a technicality, it's not a big deal. Okay. This is what's called a second degree term because the power is 2. The power over here is 1. We never write the 1, it's just a degree. The first power is unwritten. So this is a first degree term. <laughs> The numbers which are multiplying, I'm going to use some color here, these numbers which are multiplying the variables are called coefficients. So that's the anatomy of a polynomial. It looks like that. In particular, polynomials do not have unknowns down in the denominator. So if you had something like uh, x squared plus 2x divided by 3y, that's not a polynomial. Okay, you can't have fractions going on and have polynomials. Most of your Algebra 1 course will be about polynomials. There is a certain section where you go into the fractions, you deal with them separately, and they're not nice. They're hard to deal with. The problems are difficult. They typically run 10 or 15 minutes per problem. That's just like fractions with numbers, you know, you have to learn specific techniques with those things like LCDs and so forth. Well, the same thing happens with algebra. It's just that the algebra fractions are even more complicated. So uh, they take a while to do. But that's not for you. That's at least two semesters ahead. So don't worry about it now. When you get to the Read in chapter 7 in your algebra book, then you can worry about it. Okay. <laughs> but not now. <clears throat> all right, let's combine some like terms. Now, first of all, these are not like terms because they have different powers of the x. Okay, so there's no, there's no like terms there at all. But let's look at some that do have some like terms. So they're going to give us some <coughs> expressions like 8y plus 6y. That is polynomial. It's a sum of terms that uh, have variables, coefficients, and so forth. Because we don't know what y is, the thinking goes like this. We say, okay, 
I don't know what it is, but I've got eight of them, and then someone comes along and gives me six more of them. So the, even though I don't know what it is, I now know that I have 14 of them. All I do is add the eight to the six. And what are they? They're y's. So that's 14y. Well, that looks a bit like a distributive law, doesn't it? Backwards, though. So we're back to distributive law. Remember, it said a times b plus c is the same thing as a times b plus a times c. And we finished uh, the problems just a, a little while ago. We went this way. We said, okay, we're going to distribute the multiplication among these terms and get this. But it can't go that way. Meaning that if you have a sum of two terms <coughs> and there's a common factor, the factor is something multiplied. There's a common factor in this sum of two terms, you can pull it out. And the common factor in this case is A. That's common to both of these. Okay, pull it out over here. And write it as though it's multiplying the sum of what's called the leftovers. This is a leftover and that's a leftover. So it's multiplying the sum of b plus c. Well, the common factor here is obviously the y. So I'm going to pull the y out. Here it comes. And it's multiplying the sum of the leftovers. The leftover would be 8 plus 6. So there it is, 14 and 1. So with like terms, you can always use distributive law to simplify them. <laughs> minus 15 W's plus 4 W's minus W. Okay, we check. Yes, W to the first power in all the terms. Everything's fine. Those are all like terms. And what's common is the W. So let's start pulling it out. You can pull it out either on the right side or the left side. It doesn't make any difference. You're doing multiplication anyway, so who cares? So I'll pull it out on the right side, the left side this time. Here, it's multiplying on minus 15. Then you add four more of these things. Then, now maybe right there, the coefficient doesn't appear, does it? There's nothing next to that w, but it's really 1. That's the coefficient we never write. So then you're subtracting one of these w's. So you'd have to take these three numbers and add or subtract from minus 15 plus 4. Well, using the rules for addition, that's uh, rule, rule 2, subtract smaller absolute value from larger. That's a minus 11. And then minus 1 would give you a minus 12. So this is minus 12 w. That's why it's called simplification. Because it, generally speaking, makes things a lot simpler. There are cases where you have more than one unknown. Okay, so the like terms now are the ones with x's in them and y's in them. This is very much like sorting things, huh? You do the laundry, put everything in the dryer, you know, the socks, everything in the dryer, all at once. And then you sort, right? And you have a stack of uh, handkerchiefs and a stack of underwear and a stack of socks, and then you know, on and on and on, right? Because you're going to put them in different drawers. Now, the guys don't understand this, but everyone <laughs> What we do is we take the whole thing and dump it on the bed. That's it. All right, but if you're going to do a sorting routine, you could have, let's say, um, for lack of a better term, an X box. And you could have a Y box. And you could have a constant box. Huh? So all we're doing is really sorting things. Okay? Well, I've got minus 3 going in here of X's, and I've got plus 4 going in here, which means if I look inside that box, I've got a net of minus 3 plus 4, which is 1x. 
Likewise, for the y's, I've got 8 going in here, and I've got a minus 10 going in there. So this is a 1x. This is going to be a, an 8 plus a minus 10 is a minus 2 y's. Then I've got the constant going in there, and that's a minus 19. Okay, so if you simply add these together, x plus a minus 2y plus a minus 19, you've got the right result. And again, you've got the double sign thing, which becomes x minus 2y minus 19. Now, the, most people don't go to the xy box kind of image, but I just wanted to show you that you could think of it as a kind of sorting routine. That's what we're doing here. Let's do another one like that. We've got more than one unknown. Two fifths m plus one eighth m minus one fifth m. That two fifth looks like an alpha. Five three eighths m. Hmm? Looks like an L5. Does it really? Well, whatever you'd like it to be, it's yours, Louis. It's okay. Is that better? Yes. All right. <laughs> so let's get an M box going. Find out how many M's we've got, and we have an N box also. All right, we're going to put two fifths in here. And we've got a minus one-fifth over there. We've got one-eighth coming in here for the ends, and we've got three-eighths coming in there. So we're adding these together. So this would be two-fifths plus a minus one-fifth. This would be a one-eighth plus a three-eighths. Okay, now there's a problem. We've got LCD, that's not a problem but uh, you have to deal with the numerators. That's two plus or minus one, and they are fifths. This is one plus three, and they are eighths. Okay, using the rule number two for addition, that turns out to be one fifth, and this is a four eighths. These are m's, these are n's. Now the only thing we need to do here is reduce that because you don't want to leave a fraction unreduced, that's a no-no. Okay, so that gives you one-fifth m plus one-half m. And that would be the, that would be the simplification of this thing, it simplifies to that. And you can see, there's quite a difference. You know, you're down here at two terms instead of four terms. Much easier to deal with than a solid equation or something like that. So this, the part that we're doing right now is the hard part of algebra. It's getting all these rules down, figuring out how to use distributive law, what to get the signs correct, all that nitpicky stuff. Solving equations is ridiculously easy compared to this. You know, the equations are not the hard part. It's the simplification that's the hard part. And everyone complains about it, and everyone's got to do it, so, you know. I'll, I'll put a complaint box over here somewhere. <laughs> there it is. Just enjoying a good complaint. All right, zero point two a minus one point four plus one point four a minus six b. Minus 2.1. My goodness. Mm. All right. We've got A's. Remember, it's just the unknown and the power that counts in terms of uh, light terms. So the A's are light terms. The constants are always light terms. You can always combine them. That's what you've learned in terms of arithmetic. And then there's a B term, which is not light. So you want to take these two coefficients and simply add them together. 0 0.2 plus 1.4. And what are they? They're A's. OK. Uh, nothing you can do with the B. It's just minus 6B. And then you want to take the minus 1.4 and minus 2.1, add them together, and get a constant. OK, adding these two together gives you a 1.6A 
minus 6b, and over here, minus 1.4 plus 2.1 gives you 8.5, or minus 3.5. Again, getting rid of that double sign stuff, 1.6a, minus 6b, subtract positive 3.5. So you can do it with decimals, you can do it with fractions, whole numbers. Same rules apply, same concept. It's a sorting concept. All right, now, this is what we didn't get to last time. It has to do with distributive law. And it's called clearing parentheses. That's just a, a fancy way of saying distributive law, because what it means is stuff like this. They're going to give you an expression with a constant, 6 minus 3 times 2y plus 9. Okay. Now, are there like terms? Sure. You can see the like terms there. They're the constants. 6 and 9 are like terms, that's for sure. But we can combine them because the 9 is involved inside a distributive process. And the distributive process hasn't happened yet. So in order to combine like terms, you first have to do the distributive process. There's an order to it, in other words. All right, that's not a big deal. Uh, I'm going to do it slightly differently from what the book does, because it just works out easier in terms of understanding what's happening. I'm just going to take the 3 and bring it in here. Distributed numbers too. So this is 6 minus, I'm going to keep the parentheses, and I'll tell you why in just a second. It's going to be 3 times 2y plus 3 <laughs> times 9. Okay, I multiply those two things in there both by 3. <laughs> Let's go in there, straighten that up a little bit. That's going to be 6y plus 27. Fine. Now, here's why I kept the parentheses because I've still got to subtract both of them, okay? Parentheses mean do what you're doing, but do it to everything in there. Parentheses are grouping. They're grouping that whole thing together, and they're saying, you're going to subtract? Subtract both. I can't say that too much or in enough ways. More points are lost on the following process than anything else in algebra, okay? All right, let's do it. 6 minus 6y. Most people get this one correct. But they forget to subtract that one. It's also minus 27. The subtraction applies to the 27 also. That's what people forget. So by keeping the parentheses, hopefully it'll jog your memory. Oh, I've got to subtract that one. That's a sign that is almost inevitably wrong, and therefore red ink all over the paper. You know? That's what happens. All right, now we've, got, we've gotten to that 9, so to speak, it's inside the 27 now. So now we can combine like terms. So we want to know what 6 minus 27 is. Well, that's simple enough. We don't do that. We do 6 plus a negative 27, subtract smaller absolute from that larger one. So this is a minus 20. All right, so now what does it look like? Let's put it together. It looks like minus 21, we've still got that minus 6y, there's the answer. That is that. A lot simpler, huh? But notice there's a lot of touchy stuff in there you have to pay attention to. This is the nature of simplification. It's very nitpicky, very touchy. I suggest on a <laughs> test especially, go slow. Don't rush through this, because I guarantee you, mistakes will pop up all over. Let's do another one of these clearing parentheses things. Uh, minus 8 times x minus 4, subtract 5 times x plus 7. Okay? Well, we've got two distributive laws. This one brings a minus 8 inside and does that. This one brings a 5 inside and does that, but it's got a minus sign in front of it, so that's a flag. Anytime you see a minus sign in front of a distributive law, 
slow down, take it easy. All right, this is a minus 8 times x. Now, this is subtract a minus 8 times a positive 4. This I'll leave as subtraction. I'll bring the 5 inside. 5 times x plus 5 times 7. Now let's come back and straighten this out. Minus 8x. Now, a minus times a positive is a negative 32. Here, you're subtracting both of these. Minus 5x, and this is 35, minus 35. Now, when you finish, finish doing the subtraction here, you can drop the parentheses, just like when you finish doing the distributive law here, you can drop the parentheses. But we've got this double sign stuff. All right. Minus 8x, change to addition, and the opposite of a minus 32 is a plus 32. Minus 5x, minus 35. All of that has to be done before we can put the like terms together. Because if you don't, if you try and do it before, there's no way to. Because the terms are contained inside arithmetic that hasn't been done yet. So you've got to do that arithmetic before you can combine the like terms. The like terms are these two and these two. All right, so we've got a minus 8x and a minus 5x looks like this. That's how many x's we have. And if that's confusing to you, change it to addition of the opposite, and then add two negatives. You get a minus 13 x's. Over here, 32, subtract 35. Again, you can change it to addition of the opposite if you want to. That's angry. <coughs> so here's the result. <coughs> All right, how far did we go on 11.2 somewhere? Anyone got that? Um, time, time, right? uh, no, I didn't do it on 11.2. Yeah, did. I did. Mm -hmm. 11.2, you went to 81. You went to 81? Okay. All right, good, that's fine. All right, let's do that for tomorrow. And then we'll continue with the addition and subtraction properties of quality. Let's start solving the equation. Everyone has the homework? Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah, very good. Bless you.